Hello everyone and welcome back to the Green Developer channel. Today we're finally jumping into the last part of the Action Classifier tutorial. Let's get right to it. From where we left off in the last video, we'll open our predictor class. In here we'll add two new variables first. Prediction window size equals 30 and second an empty array of VN human body pose observation called poses window. If you've watched the last video, you'll understand where this is going. Classifying an action requires you to look at multiple frames over time. In the previous video, we found a body pose on each frame. What we'll now do is put together a bunch of those body poses in our poses window and analyze the content of that window to be able to classify an action within it. Before going any further, we'll create an init function for this class and call posesWindow.ReserveCapacity of the size of our prediction window, which in our case is 30. We're taking this directly from Apple's example for similar action classifier apps. We can now go back to our estimation function. In the last video, we took the information we received there and sent it back to our view controller to be displayed. Now we'll take only the first result and call storeObservation with it as a parameter. Scroll down a bit to create the store observation function, which will receive a VN human body pose observation. In here, all we'll do is make sure we always use the last 30 frames that were sent by our camera to classify actions. That means that if the window is full, we need to remove the oldest element from it to make room for the newest one. Scroll back up and we can start the action labeling process by calling label action type. Just under here, we'll create the function. Here, I'll initialize the action classifier I imported from CreateML with the base ML model configuration. This class name is a bit ugly, so I'll take a second to create a type alias for that classifier name. I'll then create a pose multi-array which will be returned from prepare input with observations, which we will create in a second. And finally, create a prediction using the prediction function of our classifier, passing in the previous result multi-array. Don't be too scared by all of that, an ML multi-array here is just a collection typed used by Apple's machine learning frameworks that stores data in a multi-dimensional array. Most of the code related to it was taken as is from the small bit of information given from Apple's examples on similar projects. Just see it as a type that needs to be passed to your machine learning model and that will be built using the information we already have. We'll scroll down and create the prepare input with observations function, which will take in our observations and return an ML multi-array. This basically bridges the information type we receive from our vision framework to something our machine learning model can understand. We create a number of available frames variable that stores the current observations count from our poses window, an observations needed variable, which is our targeted window size, and we initialize an empty initial multi-array. This next part I invite you to simply copy over to your code as it is something that is provided in examples by Apple. All this does is translate our poses to a multi-array and since our classifier requires there to be data of 30 frames, pads what would be left of a window with less than 30 frames with zeros so it's still usable by the classifier. Go on. In here, you'll also need to copy the preset multi-array function, which is the function that will write those zeros to the multi-array when they're necessary. Mm -hmm. 
With that done, we can back up to label action type. And if we don't have any errors, we now have access to a prediction object, which includes a label or the action most likely to be currently shown in the poses window and perceived probabilities for the classifier for each action type. We'll store that in a label and confidence variable. We also want this to be accessible to our view controller, so we'll go through the same steps as in the last video. Scroll back up and add another function to our predictor delegate, this time calling it did label action, passing in an action label and a confidence level. We can then call the delegate with the information we just put into those two previous variables. We already linked the delegate in the previous video, so we'll just wait for Xcode to yell at us so it can fill in our method signature. From here, you can do just about anything with the information you just received. At that point in time, you have the information about what the classifier thinks was happening in the last 30 frames that it received from the camera. In my case, I'll keep things very simple. If it's a throw that is recognized and the confidence is over 95%, I'll play a small sound. And to make sure my phone doesn't start sounding like wind chimes in a hurricane, I'll add a debounce effect that allows it to happen only once every 3 seconds. You can use your logic here to come up with something to be displayed that works for you and to make sure the behavior works for what you wanted to do in your specific situation. Maybe add a timer when you do an action for a long time, or a counter that counts how many times an action has been done, or simply a label that tells you what the classifier thinks is happening at that specific time. I'll let you use your own imagination to come up with something that works for your specific project. I hope this was useful to you all. You now have all the basic information you need to get a simple action classifier working. Let me know what you end up making with this. I'd love to hear about it. I'll see you all in the next video. And until then, take care.